team from Healing REITs, a real estate investment trust focused on the psychedelic medicine space. So I'll, I'll let you guys uh, introduce yourselves. Uh, go ahead, take it away, uh, whatever order you like. Kota Chandra, founder and president. Daniel Carcillo, chief operating officer and founder. And Ty Zakovich, CEO and founder. Excellent. All right. So maybe a brief introduction for those who aren't uh, familiar or savvy. Uh, what's a REIT? Yeah, so a REIT is a real estate investment trust. Um, it is designed to acquire property and then pay out net operating income at a 90% rate to investors. Um, so it generalized and most REITs are publicly traded. Uh, we're starting in a privately private sector round and then we're gonna go public eventually. Um, but yeah, real estate investment trust just owns real property and leases to tenants. And then the income generated from the REIT is then distributed to the to the shareholders at its most basic form. One of the reasons why it's so attractive to a lot of investors is number one, you have the liquidity option in the public markets. And number two, if you want to hold it, you're going to generate a dividend every quarter. So pays you twice. Beautiful thing. Right. And and, and right now REITs are in, in this kind of depressed volatile market of REITs are, are a pretty safe bet? Yeah, so REITs are actually really interesting. Over the last 15 years, REITs have outperformed the S&P. The S&P, I think, over that time period, it's like a 10% return. REITs are 12%, and specifically healthcare REITs. Uh, Forbes did an article, I think, just about a year and a half ago. Uh, the highest performing sector out of any asset class in the entire world. Um, obviously, with rising cost of healthcare, aging population, it's normally the safest place you can be parking your money, especially in times like this. Right, um, and and we're expecting uh, a, a future kind of boom uh, as psychedelic therapies become more mainstream. So, I mean, there's there's a kind of a mini explosion of ketamine clinics, and you have Oregon and Cor and Colorado going online with legalization and MDMA um, up next for legal for approval. So. Uh, is that does the current real estate infrastructure is it ready for this, uh, or do, do we do we need an expansion? And that's what you guys are trying to help with. Yeah, one of the main reasons that we started this was because we saw uh, a real need for helping clinicians, physicians, ketamine clinics, uh, health and wellness uh, clinics, longevity, especially with MDMA, as you mentioned, coming online. Uh, create the infrastructure so that you can properly deliver these medicines. So as you know, and I'm sure some people listening to this, psychedelic medicine is much more about experiencing the medicine within a clinic. And the result is really dependent on the set and setting which you do this medicine in. And currently the healthcare infrastructure does not um, provide uh, any type of ketamine rooms or long duration MDMA rooms. Uh, there's only a select few clinics that, that are currently doing it. So uh, this fills a need uh, for a number of different reasons and really helps companies like MAPS, uh, hopefully eventually Compass uh, with, uh, with their psilocybin program. And currently right now, FDA approved ketamine. Uh, you also mentioned Oregon, measure 109 passing, Prop 122 passing, setting up these legal frameworks, statewide programs for therapeutic adult use, starting with psilocybin. Uh, and there's going to be a real issue um, with property and and uh, any institutional lender that uh, has lended on a property that wishes to work with a Schedule One uh, will most likely get denied. So there's going to be a need uh, in these markets as well for wholly owned property. Um, and uh, service centers to be licensed, and then the therapists to practice within those service centers. Yeah, it's not going to be as simple as uh, you know renting some space and popping up a an MDMA clinic. Yeah, and, and, and yeah, Dan, and you have some experience with this uh, opening clinics yourself, Susanna. Absolutely, yeah. We acquired two, and then we built a third de novo style. Once we just focused on marketing and getting um, our patient volume up to around 90% in each of the clinics, uh, that was the trigger to then build uh, something uh, that was 3,100 square feet. 
Uh, and then we also brought in other service lines to help increase, uh, obviously, margins and um, help uh, with these novel proprietary types of treatments in stacking things like <clears throat> a deep TMS machine uh, with uh, group talk therapy with a ketamine infusion. So we saw some great success there and are looking to also help physicians, clinicians that may be working with ketamine currently bring on some of these other uh, service lines with the holistic management company. Yeah, so you're aware of the reality is trying to get a psychedelic medicine clinic up and running. Absolutely. Yeah. And all the pains for sure. Yeah. And, and a lot of the, yeah, a lot of these clinics are, you know, currently operating and doing amazing things, but they just don't have the time to shut down their clinic, do the renovation, you know, do all the real estate side of, of the business. So the REIT is going to allow us help them, uh, which in turn will help a lot of people more quickly than, than is possible now. Um, so that, that, that's the main goal and, and why, you know, why we started this. Right. I mean, I mean a, a traditional REIT would more uh, buy some real estate and hold it. And it seems like you guys are doing a, it's more of a holistic and engaged uh, service offering. Is that right? Yeah. So the, the healing REIT as, as its own company uh, will not have any of the management side. That will just that will just buy the real estate, just improve the real estate, and then we'll provide a place for the provider to practice. And then the holistic management company is a separate company um, with Dan and Cody's expertise in the space that's going to help these tenants optimize their practices as quickly as possible, um, just through all the industry standards and all the practices that that they've seen over the last five years. We want to provide a suite of services. That's the biggest key. Um, we signed an exclusive agreement with healingmaps.com. So now we have geospatial data to identify how many clinics are in a specific area based on the amount of traffic that's being done in online searches. So we've got to help identify and target specific locations and communities that are maybe a little bit undeserved, uh, you know, that don't currently have the infrastructure provided for these therapies to be delivered in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, may maybe go through a little bit more of the, of the services you offer. So you you would maybe buy the real estate and then um, offer it to clinicians who are looking to build a practice, expand a practice, and then help them get that thing off the ground through your holistic management. Um, yeah. So listen, if the doctors are already running successful businesses and you know they want to keep continuing to do what they're doing, listen, we're happy just to buy them real estate, make it a world class facility, build it out to exactly you know what their specifications are. Happy to lease it out to them. Um, you know, if they want some additional help providing services that currently aren't in their suite. We have exclusive relationships with marketing companies, uh, TMS companies, vitamin drip companies, uh, diagnostic companies. So it's completely up to the clinician provider, you know, exactly what they want. Happy to provide a full suite of services, or if they just want real estate, happy to build that out for them too, either or. Yeah. That's a good fit all. Little uh, custom tailored option, you know? Yeah, no, I mean, you're definitely going to run into that. You're going to have someone who wants to kind of do it, do it themselves, but you're going to have a clinician who just wants to provide some therapy and they can't be, they can't be bothered or, or they don't have the expertise to get this off the ground. So that's definitely going to be, it's definitely going to be helpful. Um, so I guess another question I would have is um, current locations that you're focused on. Um, what's the early state of things? Yeah so, yeah, so currently in the REIT, we're focusing on prime A-plus locations uh, to start. So we've been looking at spaces in Beverly Hills and Miami and Colorado, obviously, and Oregon. Um, that Those will be the, the early onset properties that we're, we currently have under LOI and that we're ready to execute on as soon as possible. Um, and our goal is to, it's kind of tenant-led, right? So we find a tenant, we find an operator, we understand their needs, we understand the market that they want to be in. And then once we know that, we're able to use the data that Cody referred to of healing maps. We're able to find the perfect location for them, what demand is, what demand is like for ketamine therapy in specific areas. Um, and then we buy the best piece of real estate that we think is going to fit for their needs and also be a great real estate play on the real estate side uh, for us and for the REIT and just kind of marry those two together. 
Right. Um, I guess start with locations that you know would have demand ready kind of in place. So those locations are maybe a bit more ready for psychedelic therapy than uh, than the Midwest or something else. Some other place. Yeah. I mean, listen. Uh, eventually, we want these to be accessible for every community in the country. So, uh, you know, there's really nowhere that we're not focused on and places in the Midwest, it's actually kind of surprising looking at the data. There's a lot of interest and there's a lot of searches there, very low clinic density. So might make a splash in some of the bigger markets sooner than later in that area. Right, right. Um, and as an investment opportunity, uh, this it's private right now. Um, I mean, are you... Are you looking to add investors? You're looking to add uh, potential tenants. Um, like, so yeah. both. Um, the plan right now is to be public by the end of this year. We're targeting either last week of November or first week or two of December. Um, have a very great relationship with very large attorney group that we'll be announcing very soon. So we've chosen to kind of help lead the underwriting process. Uh, Noble Capital Markets has been very helpful in agreeing to provide services for the IPO towards the end of the year. Uh, we'll be doing a small raise here next week. Um, it's fully accounted for right now, but then we're going to be launching into a Series A right after. And uh, we'll be doing a rolling close, though. So, it's, uh, you know, we're not going to take the whole $50 million right away. We want to uh, deploy the money smartly. And then as soon as we have additional LOIs in place, we'll raise a little bit more money, buy some more property. I want to be sitting on cash. Yeah. Never, uh want to deploy it as soon as it comes in the door. And we currently, yeah. we currently have a $40 million worth of property under LOI that we're ready to execute on and, and tenants that we have MOUs with that are ready to, you know, expand their practices right away. So we're going to be able to deploy the majority of the series a um, very quickly. And then, We'll just keep rolling it up from there with awareness and expansion. So not but messing always up. for new clinicians, health and wellness, beauty spas. Yeah. Um, you know, never uh, can never have enough tenants. Listen, if they want to expand, we're, we're happy to help do so. We are. Uh, we have some had some really great conversations with contract research organizations as well, uh, with some big academic ties. Um, so yeah, we're also looking to move into that space. It's not just dependent on um, psychedelic clinics. Uh, we're having some some good conversations with uh, a chiropractic group here in, in Florida that has over 12 locations and is looking to expand. So um, anything really in the health and wellness medical type of building setting, um, yeah, people can reach out to us. Yeah, I mean, I mean, you're, you're definitely filling an existing gap, a gap that's going to widen as the industry grows. Um, so th yeah, that's great. And you're going to be eventually helping people with access. So, so kudos to that. Uh, the space is going to need it. There's going to be a bottleneck and uh, you guys are helping to address it. And based on, on, on those kind of numbers, it seems you're going to have some, some news and announcements soon once you start, uh, actually signing those things and getting them off the ground. So we'd be happy to cover it. And, and, and I think it's important work. So microdose is happy to like get the news out for you guys. So. Good appreciate stuff. Having us on. Yeah. Yeah, no, we appreciate it, guys. Um, so, so this is great. This is great introductory conversation. We'll, we'll get this out uh, on a written article and, and on a video. And as soon as there's updates, uh, let us know. Definitely will, man. I'll uh, listen. Good friends with Patrick. So we'll make sure uh, you guys yeah. have a scoop on most of these things. Excellent. Yeah. Uh, I appreciate it. And I'll see you guys soon. See you at Wonderland. And, uh, Good luck with the work. Awesome, okay. brother. Appreciate Thanks so it. Thanks for the time. Thanks, bud.